Hi, everybody. Hello from Denver, Colorado. I'm back. <laughs> I am going to share my screen so you all can get the biggest, best talk of how to write science for tiny living. Go ahead and share in the chat with me. I am going to try and watch chat. My second screen popped off just moments ago, so apologies for that. Um, but let me know where you're coming from and what your right sizing challenges are for the moment. So I can speak to that for you today. I know that hello from Oregon or hello to Oregon. Okay, let me pull up mine. Hello, Guam. Amazing. Hi, Loretta. Good to see you again. <laughs> I am not streaming from a tiny. My tiny is still in process of being finished on the inside. I am streaming from a friend's house. And I'm trying to share my screen with y'all. Here we go. So I want that one. It's so hard to talk when <laughs> you guys are talking at me. Let me get this up for you. So, but just to be brief, um, I am coming at you from an organizer standpoint. And I've also got my tiny house dweller hat on as well. I am in a 200 square foot tiny house case study, I call it. And we are going into our tiny house, hopefully within the next month or two, we have to finish plumbing and get flooring laid. Uh, I'm sharing the wrong crazy thing. Hold on. Because if not, then I will just chat at you about my talk. Hi to Tennessee. Okay. Let's see if I can make this work better. If I can have that part go on its own. Sorry, guys. I might just be chatting with you, which is all good as well. Okay. There we go. Uh, so anyhow, but I've been in business organizing for 15 years. I moved to Colorado. It'll be five years in um, August. And I got my tiny house shell last year. And we've been completing the interior. My background's interior design. So it's Flapping, lighting fixtures, and doing all that crazy madness. And it's been fun. Some days I feel it's more oh, exhausting because business is abundant. And I thought, I'll work on it every day that I'm not working. Well, again, business is abundant. So certain things go by the wayside. Okay, here we go. Let me see if I can share this part for you just so you can see what you're supposed to be seeing. Slideshow. Okay. That's the full screen. Hopefully y'all can see. Bye, dude. Okay, yeah. All right, you're going to see other notes and stuff. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so let me just jump back a little bit. This is a little bit about me. Sorry, you're seeing like all the other things too. I can't figure out how to knock that out. Um, but I started out 2,800 square feet in Chicago. I downsized 90%. We're now in just under 200 square feet. Our tiny house will be 300 square feet. Uh, we've got two lofts and where the boys will sleep, my two boys, and then a first floor bedroom for me. So aging in place is possible. Um, and then we've got a big 16 by 10 foot living space in the middle. So there's that. Um, today you'll learn about my case study towards minimalism. Tiny home checklist, the process on how to right size 75% to 95% of your belongings because it is possible. Then I'll share tips and tricks using my favorite saying, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. And then we'll jump into some double duty things where you can all um, learn tips maybe. And I hope that if you learn just one tip from today and it helps make your life easier in your tiny space or helps change how things function or you live there, then I feel like I'll do my job. So, um, but just real quickly, that's the size house. It was a sprawling ranch that we started out in, in suburban Chicago when we moved out of the city and then 
had gone through, of course, the struggle is real, the downsizing process, and there was stuff just crazy all over the place. And this was from one of the rooms when we were getting new carpeting put in to redo it, to sell it. And then this is our case study. It's our 31 class C RV, and it's just under 200 square feet. And I've got two boys half the time, myself. But here's the part that I want to get into for you all, because if you're thinking about it, there's so many different ways that you can go about it. And I always suggest to rent an RV, to rent a tiny house where you can go and see how it feels. The reason that we got started is that my mom passed in 13 and my then husband had said, hey, let's get an RV. And I'm like, why would we do that? We're not 65. No offense to 65 year olds. I'm getting closer to that myself these days. But um I didn't realize that there was a culture of people that did that all the time, no matter what the age. So we did. And we realized how little we could live with traveling on those trips, whether they were long weekends or seven to 10 days or two weeks. So it really started what our process became from that. So it was actually kind of fun. But there are so many different places. And if you're here in Colorado, there is WeCasa. They have, I want to say, at least 20 tiny homes that you can rent out and try on for size. Um, and there's so many coming up on Airbnb and Verbo now. So definitely take advantage of those. Um, another thing to consider, who's going to be sharing the space with you? Do you have children, pets? Do you need a special pet cubby storage space? Do you need litter box? Do you need room for tanks or pet, um, how do you call it? Like pet spaces. I'm trying to scroll through your chat. Can I share? Oh, let me actually put this in the chat and share with you so you can all reach out to me and connect. Um, but yeah, so it's important to work into the design. And again, with my design background, that's how I designed my tiny house for all of the people that were going to be in it. And if you have other pets, then there's ways to develop nooks and crannies so that you can fit everybody in the family. Ah. Okay. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can put in spaces as well. Um, if you've got lofts, you can create neat little nooks for beds or multiple beds if you're going to have kids and they're going to have friends sleeping over, which is always fun. You've got cubbies here that you can put any number of things into. Um, litter boxes. It can be storage space for pet bowls. Um, it could be a tank if you have snakes or reptiles or whatever your you know, living partners of choice are. Um, here's a great challenge. Try and live in one room of your home. If you think about it, many of us have rooms that are much larger than our tiny house would be, whether we're in apartments, condos, large homes. See if you can do that. And you can even tape off space in a room to see that, say, hey, this is going to be our tiny little space. How can we deal with it? Are we comfortable in it? Do we mean to make it a little bit bigger or are we comfortable going a little bit smaller? So that's three on the tiny house checklist. Four. Oh, I love this one. So this refrigerator on the left hand side is the one that we had remodeled into our kitchen remodel in our Chicago home. And then the smaller one is, of course, one that you could use in your tiny home. But if you can get away with using half of that, and it seems to be with my clients lately, that we have an abundance of freezer things and then a second freezer or a second fridge out in the garage or out on the lawn eye or your porch. Um, but just whittling down to that and getting through all of those foods and being more mindful of what we have and using it up more than anything. I feel like that's the most important because if we buy those things, let's consume them and not waste them. It being Earth Day yesterday, that's where my mind is going. Um, oh, here's a great one too. If you can do meal planning. So this was one of the last things that I taught myself when, can I switch slideshow to better slide mode so we can see it? If we, I can actually, yeah, let me try that and see if I can just show you the whole thing. I won't be able to see, actually, let me see if I can throw this next door onto my other screen. It's not going. Okay, let me try and give you the full thing. There we go. Can you guys see the big one then? There. Okay, perfect. So meal planning and Whatever you eat, choose a day for Taco Tuesdays, Spaghetti Fridays, Pizza Night, Chicken, Beef, Meat, Veggies, Soup, Pasta. In this way, it helps you go through all the things that you have in your tiny space and utilize all of it. So if you have pasta, you can grab maybe 
um, some fresh tomatoes and some basil and create a really yummy sauce. Um, but just it helps us use up the things that we've got. And then with this, we don't have to think, oh, I'm exhausted. When are we going to cook for dinner tonight? Whether it's you and a partner, you and your family, or just you, that you've got it lined up and you don't have to have any more brain power or bandwidth committed to, you're welcome, thank you, um, to thinking things like that. So that's really excellent. And then, oh, here's a good one. Go through all your clothes, pick your favorites. We wear 80%, 20% of our clothes, 80% of the time. So what if you only had the 20%? Then it's everything is all your favorites. So you don't have things that are holy or things that are stained. Um, although this was a good tip, if any of you have families, is to have one set of clothes that your kids can romp around in and get dirty. And those are just like the play clothes and they can be stained or whatever. And nobody cares because that's what that's designated for. I thought that was a great idea. I heard from another parent. Um, and to just be mindful that plenty of our clothes can do double duty. I don't know if you can see, I've got my, oh, here, let me stand up for you. <laughs> I love tiny homes and I even found it in purple because purple is my favorite color. So yeah. And just be mindful of that. Cause if we go on a vacation, of course, vacations are fun. So we bring all of our favorite clothes, but again, what if you had just those things and then, then you've got room for them and the tiny, cause many times space and storage for things is an afterthought. And I feel like that should really be integrated in thinking of it all first, because we all know where to go to sleep at night because we know where the bed lives. But if we have specific homes for our storage of food, clothes, shoes, boots, accessories, whatever our favorite things are that we're going to be doing in a tiny house, board games, um, uh, art supplies, if you're a hobbyist or whatever it is. Um, yes. Right, I'm looking, if you could, I'm trying to scroll through to see what you're all are chatting about, just to see if I'm missing anything, and if I can speak to anything. Oh, yeah. Purple's my favorite, too. Okay. I'm going to jump through. Whoops. Okay. So any of the furniture. So I have one desk from my parents' house, and it's called, and it literally has been for my entire life, called The Green Desk. It's got a folding angle, which then this becomes my surface. And that's one of the pieces. And then a cabinet piece is going to become our little um, pantry for our baking and breakfast items, our little appliance garage down in the middle. And then up top is going to be savory. And that's pretty much it. So it'll be nice to integrate special things and not feel like we have to get rid of them just because we're going tiny. And then you can, of course, decorate it with anything that has meaning to you, pictures, things that you've collected over the years, things from travel, um, and of course, even hobbies that you enjoy. People can decorate with their musical instruments on the walls, different things like that. And then you can think of incorporating all the things that you like and you want to bring with. How do you want to design that? So the middle picture, they decorate it with plants. The one on the left, their aesthetic was more natural. They used a lot of natural wood. The one on the right, it's more modern. And that way you can still have all of your favorite things around you, but you just figure out how to get them all in. Heating and cooling, um, so many different ways. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, you might not need a full-blown heat system. I learned that my um, radiant heat floor mats in much milder climates is the only source of heat. And I thought it was kind of amazing because I just wanted to make sure that my feet were warm in the Colorado winters and I didn't always need to wear slippers, although I do love them. Um, but will it be a stove and you source your own wood or a pellet stove even, which is very inexpensive? The middle picture is the mini split. And then the picture on the right is another system that has just similar to a wood stove, but it's um, fueled by gas and you can choose propane or whatever your availability is of where you think you might be going. And if you're getting mobile, propane would probably be the easiest. What are your bathroom must haves? Mine must have, I know it's crazy, but um, it's a jet tub. <laughs> I love and miss a jet tub. My kids, it's a dishwasher, so they get a drawer one. But, you know, if you don't need a tub, you don't have to allocate space for that. If you want just a stand-up shower, that's fine. But you can also decide and see, you know, what are different ways that you can hang the everyday things that you have it close by. Because wherever we are, it's prime real estate having our dishes be close to us in the kitchen or, or close to the dishwasher or right next to the sink or to create a tiny coffee or tea station. If that's your vibe, then have those um, accessories and 
accoutrement, your cups, your fancy whatever's right nearby, because we don't want to be even in a tiny house taking extra space across the room to do what we do every single day. Uh, here we go. The modern conveniences. I spoke to the dishwasher. Um, but again, you can have it be a simple kitchen or you could have it be a one that's more involved or has all of the pieces that you're used to now because we can have those in a tiny home. There's no reason that just because it's tiny, it couldn't have all the things that we love and are used to, especially if we love to cook or if we love to bake um, or if you just want things to be a little bit easy when you come home or when you travel around. Okay, whoops. So do you need a washing machine or a dryer? What are your must-haves? I personally have made space for a washing machine. I've been used to hanging things to dry since I was little because my parents had a clothesline. And then even through now, we've got an X clothesline over my bedroom, the king bedroom in the back. And then we've got a diagonal one that we used to take up and down um, crossing the RV, but Oh, whatever it is for you. So there can be stackables, there can be all-in-ones, although I can speak to the all-in-ones. I have heard that they take an extremely long time to cycle through. And if you're going um, to be off grid, that might take a lot of your energy. So maybe you can only do one load of wash one or two days a week, depending on what your load capacity is, things like that. Oh, my favorite saying. So yes, use it up, wear it out, make it do, do without. I feel like this encompasses, encompasses the entire tiny house movement as far as like how we can streamline, downsize, right size as I call it, and just consume less on the planet. Again, since yesterday being Earth Day, I feel like it's more in our minds than anything, how we all help the planet not heat up, use less, just be less of a footprint on it to take care of it. Right sizing. So the process, and I want to speak more to this today because I, thanks Beth. Um, I feel like it's real important to help people in their process. It's so daunting. I've had a few clients, many since this January, even right sizing uh, decades from their parents um, and even going through if just one loved one has passed and that stuff the sentimental stuff I feel like people have the most challenges with. And here's a great book that I just read this past Christmas. I think it was, and it's now our book club for our organizers group, but it's called The Sentimental, and I'll put it in the chat, The Sentimental Guide, The Sentimental, and a pardon any typos, persons. Actually, if someone could just write it for me. And Loretta, I know you're amazing at this. <laughs> the Sentimental Person's Guide to Decluttering. It's an amazing book. It's a quick read. And it's maybe that thick. It's maybe like a quarter of an inch thick. But it's so good. She's got seven different areas that she identifies as hard to deal with. Sentimental. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, and just as an example, if you played sports or had trophies from anything when you were little, she gives you ideas on what to do with those things. If you want to highlight them in your space or if you want to let them go. But I think the biggest takeaway that I got, even as an organizer, it helped me with some of my parents' things, was if you can find the best place for you to donate those things to, to know that they're going to have a second, third, fourth, fifth life, then it's easier to let them go. And I highly always believe that sharing is caring. So if you're not going to use that something within the next day, week, month, let it go. There's no reason for something like that to take up space in our homes when we're going to be having such a premium amount of space in our tinies. Thank you, Loretta. I appreciate you. So, but it is possible. And we did go do it systematically around the house. Um, and we started with the big things. But here's one more thing to help you in your tiny journey is to take pictures of your inventory of your food before you go shopping. That way you're not going to pick up things that you already have and you're not going to add to things that what you can do is add to things like, mm, I have lots of salad dressing. Let me pick up some greens so we can consume that. Um, and I think that was the biggest thing. And even my client said just two days ago, my refrigerator is all condiments. There's no food. It's just all condiments. So maybe just make a mindful effort to consume that stuff because we bought it. We paid for it. Let's enjoy it. So here's the thing. We started about nine months before we anticipated being moving, um, being ready to move and coming to Colorado from Chicago, but it took us actually three extra months. But what we did was we started with the extra rooms. So many of you might, like we did have two living rooms, 
two places to eat, a dining room, an eating kitchen, maybe an island. So we started with like the extra furniture and that was super helpful. Um, these are different areas that you can start in where it could be easier for you. But for us personally, it helped us to get rid of the big things. But going through the bedrooms and the closets, that was key. So that eliminated, here's a thing too, to think of what climate are you going to be in? So that could eliminate winter clothes. If you're moving to a warm climate, it could help you figure out what you need to let go of now. Maybe I don't need as many warm clothes and I need to pick up a winter jacket and maybe boots, something along those lines. Um, children's toys and pets items. That was sometimes easier to go through because the kids knew, again, having 20% of their stuff that they love, playing with it 80% of the time, and with my boys, as they got older, the toys got less and less, and then they got online to do more things. They're streaming, they're playing games that way. Um, through Xbox, you don't even need the discs anymore. <laughs> and I'm probably sounding old when I say that, but you all might know that already. Um, but then going through your kitchen things, um, get products and implements that could help you do the things that you need to do and do multiple things at one time. And I was watching, and if you don't know about this, there is on my Roku channel, someone else said, I think it's on Apple TV. Um, Tiny House Nation has a channel. <laughs> it's like a, a rabbit hole that I didn't need to know about. But even they had said, if you're going to bring pots and pans, bring the biggest one that could do the most things to do whatever, all the things, as opposed to this one, this one, that one, that one. And then you have to store less. So yes, big proponent of that. I've whittled down to two cast iron pans and a little griddle, and we're good to go. Um, and then you can go around and move to the larger areas. We did garage and yard last, depending on, again, where you're going. You might want to start with that because that was the last part that took us the most time. We didn't realize how many things we had tucked into. We had gotten free offline. Um, those big industrial size shelves from Home Depot, projects, supplies, this, that, the other. But definitely start to consume everything now, whether it's food, your toiletries. I think it took us a year and a half to go through all of the lotions and the things that we were gifted and hotel samples, stuff like that. Um, definitely go through and use up all your paper products and then maybe even consider you don't need to use some of those anymore. See if there's ways to use cloth instead of paper, bidets instead of toilet paper, That all those things. There's so many different ways that you could do amazing at it. So, but here's the thing. I feel that once we decide that we're ready to let things go, that they can go on to live as their intended purpose, and then it can be shared with people who are in need. Um, you might have uh, homeless coalitions near you. We have some great services here in the Denver area that help people get back on their feet. And they have clothing closets that people can shop at. They get 80 items per month for free. It's amazing. So many of my clients, when they hear that, it makes them happy that what they're letting go of and don't have room for can go on and help somebody else in a new capacity and be reinvented. So that's really a good way to look at it. Um, maybe there's pet shelters nearby. I just found out about a horse rescue spot here that we can take aluminum cans to. So if you've got space to store things like that, to set them aside, to give them, you know, to the greater good or to serve someone's purpose. I take a lot of things from my clients to a local thrift store here that feeds a neighborhood with all of the money that they make. And of course, they have funding from the state as well. But I just like the idea of helping in that capacity. So if you can find places like that, then it's definitely easier to let things go to share. So here's a great tip from the minimalist too. You can get rid of something that you're waffling about and think, oh, I really need it next time or whatever. But sometimes that stuff takes up so much space in a closet or a garage or drawers in our kitchen that if you can replace it, and barring you don't move into the mountains in Colorado here where you can't get somewhere in 20 minutes, but if you can replace it for $20 or less within 20 minutes, let it go. Because most of the time this past year, especially through the pandemic, my clients were like, oh, we miss so little. And I really need for nothing myself. I miss a jet tub. Y'all know that already. But um, yeah, so many things. And even if you want to help and find a friend to partner this with, if you don't, um, I mean, I always say use an organizer because we help you be very decisive in a quick amount of time. And like, unlike friends, we're not going to help you. Like we're not going to badmouth you. We're not going to say you have to get rid of that. That's, that's not the objective. It's just to help you um, edit for what you want to move on for your next chapter. And that's really it. But um, sometimes friends can help 
And then you guys can do it together. Like they help you, you help them. And even if they're not moving into a tiny, I feel like everybody can benefit from an edit. And one of the tips that I give in my sheet of how to, I forget what it's called, but I put it in the chat earlier. <laughs> um, think as if you are living and moving in six months. So would that make you shop less, stock up less, use up more things because it's costly to move so many things and especially liquids, chemicals, toiletries, that sort of thing and share with people. So again, what to do with the discards. I'm a big proponent of Facebook Marketplace, Poshmark, OfferUp's still around, Craigslist next door. I think OfferUp's still around. Um, but recently, I have started partnering with a company called Max Sold. It's M A X capital S O L D, and they are in Canada and all around the country. It's an online auction, but it is local people bid. So when I first joined, people in, there were about four to 5,000 people in Colorado listed. I just found out last week when I submitted a client sale that there's 11,000 people. So these are different ways. If you've got lots of things that you need to edit and get rid of, thank you, Loretta. Um, that's a fast way to do it because you can do an anywhere from with the good numbers, really a five to seven day auction. It bids as an eBay. But the great thing is, is that those last two minutes, if someone bids and then you bid and someone else, they don't cut it off. They allow you to get the most for your money. And it's really whoever gives up first. And that allows the sellers, which would be potentially you to get the most for your items as well. But again, it cleans out two days after the sale, whatever you're selling all walks away on that single day. So it's kind of amazing in that realm. And then, oops. so I'm a big proponent of things doing double duty because, again, in a small space, we need things to perform for us better, or maybe we just don't need them at all. But an ottoman, you can have it function as storage for here, my client uses it for blankets, or you could put board games, or you could put seasonal shoes, or whatever you want in there. And then you also get a nice footrest, or it could even be extra seating when friends come to visit you. This cute little kitchen appliance is a little oven kind of like it reminds me of easy bake it's so adorable um you can cook eggs on the griddle or hands on top you can make coffee or tea and then here's the famous re-drawer dishwasher re single drawer dishwasher that my kids not this fancy one will be getting but you can even repurpose and make work the small countertop ones that you can get that's actually what we're going to do but we're going to tuck it into a cabinet below the countertop so that'll work nicely for us so our shoes is for keepers so these are different great ways for you to use up whatever you're doing this one's fantastic this is a pantry that allows you to store all your dry goods and then they've got an induction burner that comes and goes and then the one on the left, I love these for spices as well. One of my clients used them for makeup so they could easily access all of the things and they weren't digging in and out of a drawer constantly. Um, that way everything's accessible and you don't waste time finding things. Um, I love it for spices. You can use it for oils. You can have even a little Lazy Susan on your countertop for utensils and salt and pepper or anything like that if you love to cook. Storage, we all know that stairs are amazing for storage, whether they're drawers or pull out cubbies. This is a wall for a loft. Um, what my kids and I decided to is that theirs wanted to be completely closed off in a loft. So they're gonna have even trap doors because my builder had welded and built the lofts with gorgeous beetle kill tongue and groove flooring. And then they're gonna have a little trap door. My one has his Nerf gun wall, a la the matrix. So we're gonna close the trap door. So those bullets and balls and things don't end up all over the floor and rain down constantly. And um, then the other one designed an open space closet where it's just the rod, the walls, and then there's no curtain, there's no door. Because he said, mom, if I can see it, I'll keep it even more organized. And I'm like, oh, I love you even more now. <laughs> so I thought that was amazing. And then there's ways to do roll, tuck all your things so you can better edit. It's kind of like a la Marie Kondo. I also love the tuck and roll. And on the left side, or excuse me, the right side here, one of my newest clients, um, her mom has a clothing business, but she is adorable. She's eight years old now, and she taught me the burrito roll. So you lay out your leggings, you roll the waistband down twice. You picture this, you fold it in half. So now it's knee length. You start to roll up that knee length part, and then you unroll the waistband, 
around that little burrito bundle and you can throw them across the room or drop them on the floor and they don't open. You can tuck them vertically into your drawer or your bin and they all stay nice and neat. And that's actually on my business page if you want to see. <laughs> she photographed me doing her Harry Potter burrito. So yes, <laughs> it's so nice. And then if you grab one, then it doesn't upset the whole drawer. But hanging drawer shelves, I love these because you can tuck so many different things and there's categories in here. This is actually mine in the tiny now. Um, so I've got casual t-shirts, like just your tank tops. I've got work shirts, I've got shorts, I've got skirts. And up at the top, I've got things that are rolled that are like those big boot socks that are fleece and they come up to your knee and they're so warm and snugly here in the Colorado winters but so many ways to tuck different things. And the one on the left is actually about 18 pairs of socks folded and nested. And then they come and go as I get more. I, I used to be a, a sock darner, but now I'm just like, Ugh. sometimes if they're too threadbare, I just, I'm going to donate. Um, oh, and here's a new thing too, that I just learned about in Colorado and check to see if it's available in your city. It's a new way to recycle things. If you don't have the great greatest resources because some communities here they don't even require residents to recycle and I thought that's ridiculous in this day and age but it's called rid well r-i-d-w-e-l-l -L -L, and I'll put that in the chat because they will give you um different bags canvas bags for recycling batteries plastic wrap of any kind which is bags things that come around things that you eat and they'll pick it up about every other week and the one that I know of, it's like $12 a month. So if you're not in a community that does that for you, see if this amazing business is nearby you because they do such a good job of keeping things out of landfills. And that's something that I'm a huge proponent of as well. Okay. Okay. So this was, people were asking before, and we've got excellent time for questions and I can elaborate on more things. Um, this was my tiny house design. The white one was the first. Then I picked sighing because we had this huge hail before I moved here. Um, I wanted it to look clean and modern, but I picked metal siding and metal roofing. So if we ever did get hail and it wasn't pretty, I could just bang at it with a hammer to make it look more intentional and I'd have a really cool texture of pattern on there. <laughs> but I built with SIPs, so it's structurally insulated panels. It's basically an ice cream sandwich of insulation. My walls are three inches thick. It's quieter. It's warmer in the winter. It's cooler in the summer, but I am still having radiant heat flooring again, installing that, um, again, because I don't want to have cold feet. And then we're doing a mini split. And since it's only 300 square feet and about 440 with the lofts, in between that middle part is our rooftop deck. And I laugh because Zach Giffen had just said um, recently, he goes, if it was up to me, everybody would have a rooftop deck on their tiny house. And I was like, yes, yes, I totally agree. Just so wherever we land, wherever we visit, wherever we go, we have private outdoor space where people aren't peering at us as where we are now in town, kind of in a fishbowl. So yeah, sounds amazing. Um, and then the interior, and we've gotten so far, but this is how it looked when they started. And again, the gorgeous beetle kill wood. Sad that the beetles, um, the pine beetles had killed so many trees in Colorado um, with their infestations, but they make beautiful grainings on the wood and yeah, the details are great. So, ooh, I forgot to mention, this is a great book. He helped me even downsize a little bit more. <laughs> I know, you must know what I'm talking about, Rory. <laughs> Uh, it's not fun. Um, I even put film on my windows so I could see out, but people couldn't necessarily see in to my RV windows, but I won't have to worry about that on the tiny. We'll be further away and just hopefully in um, a new friend's yard in an unincorporated area where there are no rules to say that you can't have a tiny house um, in Colorado. Um, but Fumio Sasaki, when I was in the first year in our RVK study, Tiny Home, um, I read this book and I always preface it with, he didn't have kids, a partner or family living with him, but if he couldn't find a use for something that day, that day he got rid of it. And I was just like, oh, Wow. So I got rid of more serving dishes because we weren't entertaining in the way that we did before. Um, my kids say I have an addiction to carabiners and mason jars. That might be true. It's probably true. It is true. Um, but it just allowed me. And for those of you that like to save jars for those reasons too, something, if it's something that you consume often, like olives or peanut butter or whatever, you're always going to get more of those jars coming in. So it's okay to properly recycle them and let go of them. So you have space for everything. Because here's the thing, when you're in a tiny space, 
the whole reason to have things in your home have a home is, of course, for ease of finding them and not having to go like this or dig through layers, but it's also for absolutely the ease of being able to put them away. Because if you're a person that likes to have clean, bare spaces, horizontal spaces, they always breed clutter because if we have a spot to put something down, we will, and more and more and more and more. So if your brain needs to, like mine does, needs to have that calm, clear, open, then definitely find spaces with, um, allowing your things to have home. So think of this, it's the 80-20 rule again. Our cabinets, our closets, our storage nooks should all be about 75 to 80% full. That way we can find things that we need without it being hard to do, and then we can put them away. Because if you think about it this way, some people say, but I need to see everything become visual, but here's a big visual. If we all know where to go to sleep at night, because we know where the bed lives. I feel like we can train our brains to be mindful and know that this is where I put my pens, this is where my computer lives, have a space for your keys, whether it's a hook. And I was just discussing this yesterday with a client. I don't like keys to be out in the open. I like them to be tucked behind a cabinet door, tucked inside a closet, whether wherever you hang your key rack, or even if it's a little bowl, maybe give it a lid, just so it's not visible to anybody else who might be passing by your space, in your space, whatever. It's just a safeguard of mine that I encourage. Um, Otherwise, definitely make sure that where you put your things, it's closest to where you use them. Because again, you want it to make it easy. If you want to play board games with your friends or your kids, it's easy to have it be tucked in an ottoman or under a table or behind the sofa, underneath it, something, whatever is easiest. Um, And then the same with things where you appoint your kitchen, have things be closest to where you're cooking, for your utensils, where you're, if you're going to have either, of course, you're going to have a sink, hopefully, um, but a dishwasher where stuff is super close so you can tuck it right where it's being used and then... That way, here's resources. Um, I can take questions. I know I blitz through stuff a lot quickly. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, just wanted to see if you guys have anything. Um, oh, it doesn't work. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let me. I just had web designers working with my stuff at the beginning of the year. Let's just do email. Let's go that way. about that. Let me see if I spelled myself right. Of course not. (laughs) You're so welcome, Zach. Thank you for having me again. I appreciate you all. My clumsy fingers. Hard to find a cabinet maker to build custom furniture. I haven't used anything custom. Oh my gosh, speaking of resources, I bought most everything from not even a lot. I am a big proponent of buy nothing groups on Facebook. It's B-U-Y nothing. It's basically you sharing things in your neighborhood with people similar to next door. If you've got like a neighborhood next door group as well. Um, uh, Vicki, elaborate on that. I'd love to speak more to that for you. Overwhelming to do a lot at one time. Definitely. Um, that's why bite-sized pieces are best. But the Restore, the Habitat for Humanity Restore, I got one, two, my bathroom cabinet, one, two kitchen cabinets, three kitchen cabinets, and those four cabinets plus my um, faucet for my sink in the kitchen was less than the one cabinet that I had to buy new because I couldn't find them after looking for like two to three months at a couple of the different resources, restores in the Denver area. So yeah, definitely. But um, Vicki, if you're thinking about the pieces, definitely actually let me stop sharing so I can just chat with you all. Um, to go about um, systematically, slowly. Um, yes, yes. And and I didn't buy anything for like the first two months. I got wood from my neighbors. I got 
um, plywood. I got um, MDF boards. So the only thing that I bought is I created, um, I call it my princess in the pea bed. So for my 60 by 80 queen size bed, I did uh, three foot storage underneath and that's accessible by a door outside underneath and no access from the inside because, you know, heaven forbid, I didn't want people getting in and through that way. Just that's my thing, but it's all my storage space for my outdoor gear. So my kayak goes in there, my stand up paddleboard, our snowboards will go in there, our camping bin, um, and that sort of kind of like the garage stuff. And then we'll have to figure out a way to weld on racks to store our bikes um, and different things like that. But otherwise, on our rooftop deck, we'll have just low seating, kind of like the beach ones, um, because the special amazing membrane that they used for my roofing, um, you shouldn't have anything that's like small pinhole or like that to try and break through that membrane. So if you do have any um, chairs with feet like that, we've got to do like a disc of some semblance to spread it out so it doesn't puncture or injure it. Um, Taking out lots of items to get rid of can be daunting. Yes, that's why I encourage. So with my clients, what I'll do is we'll start in one room and I just um, met with another client and we're going to start her downsize because she's going to move up north to Fort Collins, Colorado, go through her parents' house. And then um, with that collective money, go buy um, a house in Washington, in northern Washington. So we start because if you think about it now and if you're looking at the rooms in your house, if you're not tiny yet, start in one spot, start from top to bottom and slowly go either clockwise or counterclockwise around the room and allow yourself some grace. Your house didn't fill up in a day. It's not going to empty in a day and know that it is a process, but it's going to be, oh my gosh, it's going to be so rewarding in the end once you get through it. And if it seems too daunting, start with a drawer. Um, when we were in lockdown for COVID, I did a series of um, it, we kind of called it like happy hour or cocktail hour, whatever you want to do. If you enjoy um, whatever or not, we started with a drawer and we'd empty out the contents. We would sort through everything and figure out what could stay there and not should, because I feel like we shouldn't should ourselves ever. Um, but if there was anything that could store someplace else, like if it was better served being tools, maybe in a different room of the house or a different spot in the house, as opposed to the junk drawer. And I call it, we now have one we call a utility drawer because it houses small tools, batteries, um, command hooks and different things like that, uh, zip ties and my sewing kit. So different little things like that. So I feel like everything can have a purpose and it doesn't have to be called the junk drawer. Sorry, still. Um, but yeah, so there's different ways to go about it. But I highly encourage people to go through the large things because if you're visual like I am, it's so rewarding to see the big items go first. And then you can start to go through, maybe you've got a home office that you don't use in the capacity that you did, or maybe you're retiring or just switching jobs. So a lot of that stuff can go because things that are, and I'm, I say this, I'm not an accountant or any, or a CPA or any of that stuff work in that realm, but you can keep paperwork up to seven years and then past that, it's okay to recycle anything. People are sometimes also worried about shredding things. If anything can be found publicly online, then that's not something that you need to be concerned to shred um, checks and whatnot. Of course, if the account's still active, definitely shred those. Um, but there are easy ways to let go of that stuff. Oh, and here's one thing too. My, one of my friends did when we'd go um, camping together with our RVs, she would always bring her junk mail with her and feed the fire with that. I'm like, oh, that's kind of a creative way to repurpose something. And, you know, you didn't have to buy more firewood, but and she had like a big bag full of it one day. So that was kind of fun too. So yeah, there's different ways to let go of things and do. Oh yeah, that's great. Idea. Like, <laughs> I don't have a fireplace right now, but I love it. Yes. Yeah. Maybe get one of those little, ooh, a friend of them has, it's like, and I saw an advertisement, it's, I say this, but it's more probably like that, but it's got angles and little holes around the top. It's like a fire canister, if you will. And it just helps with the smoke because one of my kids is more sensitive to fire smoke and doesn't like fires at all, but I love the smell of firewood. So I'm trying to think of other just like easy tips that I give most clients that would help you all in your right sizing process. Um, as far as like different things. Oh, 
here's one thing. If you have kids, we had shared, like, so we'd collect a bin of stuff and you can either do this. So they have maybe a half to a third or even a quarter of their toys out at the same time, put some stuff away because I feel like if it's away and then they get it out in a month or so, it's like, Oh, it's all new again. It's like birthday or Christmas, but you can trade things with friends, neighbors as well. So if your kids have this set of toys and they have that set that you can swap and again, new toys without spending any money to do it. Um, or you can just gift things like that to daycares, schools in the area, um, there was even one church group um, near us that has one big sale of the year to help fund the programs and all the offerings that they do all year. So one of my clients, we just had the gentleman come by and pick up. So there might be things in your area that you can share your items with like that. Um, oh, the solo stoves. Yes, that does sound familiar. <laughs> Thank you, Loretta. Um, yeah, but does anybody have any questions of anything that I can speak to for you as far as how the downsize process goes. And I feel like I do feel this. So if you have and in my business, I offer this to my clients, anything that they're getting rid of or willing to donate, I take that away for them. So they don't have the homework of that because going through the mental process of making all those decisions that day, and then having to find the best places to go share them with people, it's daunting. So that's something that I offer. Let's see. Oh, I like the comment. Let's see. How do my consult sessions work? So what I do, Vicki, is I do online vir virtual organizing, but I also do my free find the ease call and that's 30 minutes and we can decide if we want to work together. But if you're just looking for some tips and trips, reach out to me. I'm happy to share whatever knowledge I have to help you make the downsizing process a little easier. And don't feel like you can only do it if you're considering working with an organizer, not even me. It doesn't matter. I'm happy, happy to share. I can talk tiny. I can talk organizing. I can talk tiny homes all day, every day. It's it's absolutely a love, love relationship for three. Um, so let's see. Um, long text, but trying to downsize, moving to a tiny home. Giveaway box, almost nothing. Maybe box isn't much better. Okay, so here's the thing. When moving tiny, we don't have to give away the things that we love and then the things that make us happy or that hold good memories, but maybe this will help you a little bit. And I think I got it from the Sentimental Person's Guide to Decluttering. If there's negative energy around anything that you've got in your space or if it holds just negative memories from something that was good, but now isn't, that might help. But what are the types of things that you're talking about, Laura? Like what's what's surrounding you that you're having trouble? Are there certain categories of things? Is it keepsakes? Is it like a collection of something, records or otherwise? Help me there. And then, yeah. Oh, Vicki. And so, yeah, we the consult sessions kind of work the same way as if I would be in your house. We'd address an area. You tell me about your organizing or downsizing or right-sizing challenges. And then I could offer advice, tips and tricks that you could definitely use that day or things that could help you slowly um, go through and edit whatever it is your um, pieces are. Super, super. Yes, right-sizing is my favorite. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I always try and spin things in the positive. So right sizing just feels good. And I always say edit. I don't say purge. I feel like it's a negative. And then one of my clients said that she actually um, is a counselor to people with eating disorders. So she says she definitely appreciated the use or not, not hearing me say purge, but yeah. And I recognize it's a daunting, hard process and it's not easy, but if someone could help you go through it, just so you're guided and helped through the process and just keep in mind like what you get to on the other end, kind of like on the other side of the rainbow, just like, oh, I get to live in this amazing tiny space. And, and tiny is all relative, right? Tiny for me could be different than tiny for you. Um, but yeah, just think of oh, all the more time that you're going to have to just sit and enjoy your coffee or tea or go out and be active or just have time just to sit. I mean, I learned from the pandemic that I'm a human being, not a human doing. So if I could share that with more people to be able to have more time in their life to do whatever it is they want, that's that's my goal, you know. So, all right, clothes. Ooh, good, okay. So here's clothes. Sometimes clients will keep one size up or one size down. And again, I feel like let's not, one of my clients downsized her scale <laughs> in the pandemic. She's like, I do not need that kind of negativity. So for her to do that, um, I, I loved that, first of all. But if we're thinking that we're not at our ideal weight, you know, we 
have one life. We only have so much time on this amazing planet as it spins around the sun. Um, I feel like those things should be your favorites as well. And if it's something that you want to make a goal, if that's something that you want to do, hang it up, put it in a spot in your closet and you get to focus on it that way. And I recognize that there might be things that are from memories. Maybe you've got a wedding dress or um, what's it called? The varsity jacket, things like that. Again, those are things that we can create space for if we want to. But just know that the things that you choose to keep in your space are going to prevent you from having some other things in your space. And I think just be decisive and be ruthless with yourself and be okay with it, you know, but um, on the close, I do say if you can whittle down and have, oh, this is something that I shared in another talk, pick a number. So for me, my favorite number is nine. Um, maybe hopefully yours isn't like 33, <laughs> but I've got nine. Okay. I have 12 pairs of leggings. So the struggle is real, but I have nine dresses. I'll have nine or less like favorite fun tops like this one. I love tiny houses. Um, and do it that way, whether you have pants, skirts, um, clothes that you, maybe you hike or maybe you climb. So pick your categories. And then I feel like the other ones can kind of either go by the wayside or you can multi-use them because there's some that I like to go out dancing in, or I like to go, you know, out with friends in and things like that. But they can also be, as my sister does for holidays, this, you could maybe do this with clothes. She's kind of crazy in this home. Um, she'll buy decorations and she'll put them up and then she'll go back and donate them <laughs> when the holiday is over. I'm like, that's kind of diabolical and kind of genius at the same time. So, but she doesn't have to store it. So there's that. But if you buy a dress or buy a great coat and you wear it once, and it's kind of like the realm of rent the runway where you can buy fancy things or rent fancy things instead of buying them. And then you don't have to house them forever. Um, do that with clothes. I've had a couple coats that I was like, oh, this is cool. But then I was like, eh, it's okay. And then I just donate it back to as well. So yes. Oh yeah. There you go. Do it, Laura. Absolutely. Um, oh yes. I've seen people make quilts and then you can either hang them so you can look at them all the time or you can snuggle with them or you can even make multiples. It doesn't have to be like one giant comforter. It could be ones that you snuggle with when you watch TV or sit on your sofa or enjoy looking out the window, whatever. Yes. Um, Yes, I've seen the project on her with 333, whether, and I think it included accessories too and shoes. And that's that's a little bit of my struggle too. My son was just pointing that out last night. He's like, mom, you've got some shoes under your bed, which is true. But I think I only have three boots, three pairs of boots left. Like I have a going out pair. I have my winter snow, that kind of crazy weather boots. And then my docs, because Doc Martens, because... I've worn those since college and they're just really cool. Not the same ones I've gotten, I've upgraded, <laughs> but, and that's the thing too. We can be okay with upgrading and then sharing the other things with other people. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what other sayings that I've got. I just, I definitely feel like everything has to have a home. Um, the use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. Definitely that because it just encourages us to be more mindful and think of ways that we can do that. Let's consume all of our toiletries. And if we're not going through them, share them. Um, same with clothes, wear them out. I've got a friend that says each, well, the car that they've got now, I kind of feel the same way. I'm going to drive it until it's dead <laughs> because I invest money and I might have to put upgrades into it or maintenance, but it's definitely a couple, maybe it's a grand here or two grand there, but it's definitely not the 30,000 or the 50,000 or the $80,000 car that I have to pay for because I'm just appreciating the one that I've got. So things like that. Um, making it do um, with your appliances. You know, what can you use that will do the double duty? I love my instant pot. I got rid of my rice cooker, my crock pot, my, what else? Oh, and if you don't know this, someone had shared with me that you can get a lid for your instant pot that can create and it can become an air fryer. So then you wouldn't need two large appliances. You just need one. And if you get it on Black Friday, if you can wait that long, otherwise I think it's like a $90 attachment. But if you've got your Instant Pot new to you or um, it was shared with you like mine was, then it might be worth it to you know, share again. But okay, we've got four minutes left. Any other questions, any other things bubble up for you all? Happy to share. And then I'll pop this in one more time. 
then again, if you want to do a free find the ease chat, let me know the link. I apologize. My link isn't working, but then I've also got, let me see if I put it in here. Oh yeah. So here's another one. It is bit.ly and it's AAE simplify tips. So this will give you a, let's see if it works, bit.ly, oh, sorry, bit.ly. And this is the one that I was talking about. Offsite storage, bad idea. Ooh, I got rid of my offsite storage because they just kind of keep raising the price, raising the price, raising the price. In my opinion, they're the same kind of crappy service. So if you can have storage like that someplace, I mean, and maybe if it's gear or something like that, it might be worth it. But for the amount that you're going to pay to store stuff offsite, you could have given it away, bought it again, maybe multiple times for whatever it is. So I feel like those are the, because many of my clients use their garage as kind of like the precursor to things ending up at the Ark for donation or Salvation Army, whatever. But I say be decisive. If something is leaving your kitchen or leaving your bedroom or whatever, make sure it gets to that donation spot. If not that day, definitely within that seven day period, because those are really the zones for everything to, that where it kind of goes and gets forgotten about. And if we forget about it and we're still paying for it for a storage unit, then I just feel like there could be better uses of our resources even if it's big things, you know, find family members that want furniture from family members that have passed away. Are there kids that are going to college that your friends or neighbors know that need stuff for their, for, to appoint just their basic dorm life or, you know, small apartment, or are there, like we have here, the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless that is always in constant need of furniture for their clients. Um, and there was a, I think it like a 30, 30 unit, building built two Novembers ago that all of our collective organizer group in Colorado had just saved furniture for and brought to their warehouse or had, you know, the facilities van come and pick up because sharing is caring. People really do feel better when they know that their things that they're giving away can be put to good use for others. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. I have a friend who was a math teacher and she recently got her doctorate and then she left the university that she taught at and she, it was hard for her to whittle down her books. It, the struggle is real and, and that's fair. Um, but who in that realm can you share those books with if you don't want to house and keep them all? Are there other people that you might be in groups with that would love to take some of those on? And, and then that makes you happy too, knowing that they do get a good spot to go to. So, yes. Um, unearthing one of my client's parents' basements, we found at least eight different sets of china um, she said that her mom was a collector of beautiful things, and it was true, um, but it also looked like there were things that were collected to start selling things on eBay, and she didn't, so then it was just something that she was tasked with, and another great book in this realm is The the Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. I'm not sure if I've got the title right, but now that I say it out loud, it I think it sounds right in my brain, but that's another good one where people can start to do the editing process now. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. That sounds lovely. I do love those tiny libraries that I see all over the place. So thank you all so much for being here. I'll be here for a few minutes, but if you want to pop on and listen to our next amazing speaker, feel free. I hope to see you in some of the happy hour chats later. Thank you, Zach. That's awesome to be with you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Happy tiny living reach out to me. I'd love to chat, tiny, organizing, anything. No worries. Hope to see y'all soon. So welcome. Hopefully I covered everything. Any kind of questions? You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Bye, everybody. Have the best day of the rest of your life. Yes. Yeah, you can cook it now. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. <laughs> um, I think it's 45, no, 17 minutes. 400. We're cooking pizza now. <laughs>
All right. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Purple's my favorite. These are Zenny, Z-E-N-N-I. Go look. They're amazing, inexpensive, and they even have the disappearing line readers. They're a great deal. They were maybe 120. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Hope to see some of you and chat with you in the happy hours or whatever we're calling it this time. Love it, love it. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.